Your Excellency, good afternoon in Seoul. And to all those, the large audience joining today, good morning, good afternoon. It's a great honor for us to have the President of the Republic of Korea, His Excellency Moon Jam In, join us today for this very special dialogue. And I see you are sitting in a very uh, well-equipped room, Mr. President. Mr. President, the world has closely watched Korea during this pandemic. We were impressed with how the government and its people have come together to combat the spread of the virus, introduce innovative ways to test, trace and treat cases, many that went on to serve as models around the world informing their own responses. We have also closely watched the measures you have announced to reinvigorate Korea's economy. The Korean New Deal with its three pillars of digital green and social safety net resonate with many of us who view that recovery from this pandemic should also be used as an opportunity to restore and reset our society and economy, to end further polarization and to set the path for an inclusive and sustainable future. We are therefore extremely pleased that at the beginning of 2021, you are taking part in this virtual dialogue hosted by the World Economic Forum during our Davos Agenda Week sharing your views with an audience from around the world and engaging afterwards in a discussion with leaders from business and civil society. We all welcome His Excellency Moon Jae-in, President of the Republic of Korea. Thank you very much, respected Executive Chairman Klaus Schwab, Honorable Secretary General Angel Gurria, global leaders, I am greatly pleased to explore our path of inclusive recovery and resurgence together with global leaders at this Davos agenda. 2020 was indeed a difficult year for us all, but it was also a year when solidarity and cooperation were more desperately needed than ever before. The Republic of Korea was able to quickly make and deliver diagnostic kits in the fight to control the pandemic thanks to the COVID-19 information that the WHO shared with its member nations. Vaccine development, which typically takes a decade to complete, was accomplished in less than one year's time due to the collective efforts of many countries, corporations, and researchers. And yet we are still not in the clear. The economy is recovering, but the polarizations and inequities brought by the pandemic are growing even bigger. As COVID-19 becomes more prolonged, inequality is widening, a gap that we are witnessing both within countries and between countries. Equally as important as responding to the immediate COVID-19 outbreak and the economic crisis is our commitment to pool our wisdom to fight against polarization and inequality in the post-COVID-19 era which is why I believe the theme for uh, this year's World Economic Forum, a crucial year to rebuild trust, is very timely. Global leaders, when Korea became the second country in the world to fall prey to COVID-19, we made it a principle to keep to the spirit of inclusiveness, where we would leave no vulnerable persons behind. We administered rapid and free testing and treatment to patients in quarantine, regardless of their nationalities. And when there was a shortage of face masks, we introduced a five-day rotation rationing system, enabling every Korean to purchase as many masks as they needed. Now, Korea has entered the stage of overcoming this pandemic and has set a goal for inclusive recovery and resurgence. As with all other countries, we will begin by carrying out vaccinations, which will be the first step we take towards herd immunity. 
Korea has entered into contracts with many pharmaceutical companies to secure a supply of various types of vaccines that will sufficiently cover our entire population. And we have decided on free vaccinations for the country to uphold the cause of an inclusive recovery in our everyday lives. Starting next month, we will roll out vaccines to nursing facilities or elderly medical welfare facilities, at-risk medical professionals, and care workers, according to priority. The Korean uh, government is coming up with optimized measures for vaccine transport, storage, and administration according to each drug type, as well as countermeasures and compensations against any adverse reactions. We are also working hard on our own homegrown vaccines, and when the treatments being developed in Korea are successful, we will supply them to any country that requests it in a spirit of inclusiveness. For the sake of an inclusive recovery, Korea has also strived to prevent the gaps in our society from widening further amid this crisis. We have absorbed employment shocks through initiatives such as substantial job retention policies and creation of public sector jobs and dramatically scaled up subsidies for low-income families to improve the distribution effect made possible by fiscal spending. The government has provided relief quickly, prioritizing those with the most urgent needs with three rounds of emergency relief payments, as well as job retention support, vouchers to low-income households, support funds to the self-employed and freelancers, and financial assistance to small businesses. We are speeding up efforts to bridge the gaps in our society by providing better protection to essential workers and expanding workers' compensation and employment insurance benefits to more workers. But we want to do more. We are discussing compensation measures for small businesses and self-employed individuals for losses attributable to COVID-19-related restrictions and closures. Uh, my administration and the legislature are also discussing a profit-sharing system in which the government provides strong incentives to companies that have prospered during the COVID-19 pandemic to share their profits with their hardest hit peers on their voluntary goodwill. A more wisdom will be needed to work out the details, but if these initiatives are realized, they can become a benchmark for inclusive policies to use in overcoming future pandemics together. Leaders of the world, last year, Korea achieved the highest growth rate among the OECD member countries while minimizing negative impacts to the economy. Korea's GDP ranking is projected to rise to the world's top 10, and our benchmark stock index also posted the highest growth rate among the G20 countries. The world is taking note of the stellar economic performance that Korea has achieved while carrying out an exemplary pandemic response, and domestic and foreign investors also present optimistic outlooks for the Korean economy. The Korean economy has already returned to positive growth since the last third quarter. In December, our export surpassed $50 billion in two years, marking an all-time high for the month of December. In the first half of this year, the Korean economy is expected to recover to pre-COVID-19 levels. And also in terms of the combined growth rate, combining the growth rate from last year and this year, we're going to record the highest growth rate as well. Amidst this fast economic recovery, the Korean people are now seeing for themselves the possibility of getting back to normal as well as making an inclusive recovery and take off in the economy. We're also taking on a more daring challenge with the Korean New Deal. Through the Korean New Deal initiative, Korea will expand employment and social safety nets and attain an inclusive recovery. Our digital and green New Deal will deliver sustainable growth for the Korean economy to reach, to reach new heights. Moreover, the regionally balanced New Deal will help revitalize local economies and enhance the quality of life for all. The Korean government is planning to inject 160 trillion won into the Korean New Deal by 2025. To be more specific, we will invest 28 trillion won to strengthen employment and social safety nets, 58 trillion won in the Digital New Deal, and 73 trillion won in the Green New Deal, thereby creating jobs and growth engines for the future. The private sector, for its part, has been unveiling large-scale investment plans one after another. And as the New Deal fund mobilizing policy funds and private financing gains greater traction, total investment is expected to be scaled up even further. 
Korea is equipped with world-class ICT infrastructure with remarkable progress made in digital competitiveness. For new products and technologies that combine IT, the environment, energy, and other green industries, Korea can also be utilized as their testbed. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Korea has never enforced any lockdowns or border closures. This clearly demonstrates that Korea, more than anything, is a safe and stable business partner and investment destination. I hope that the Korean New Deal will lay ground for global companies and venture startups to take on new challenges and become a catalyst for expanding cooperation in future industries. The Green New Deal represents extraordinary efforts on the part of the Korean people to enhance stewardship of our global commons, the theme of this meeting. Last year, with an aim to join the global response to climate change and build an inclusive and sustainable growth for humanity, Korea declared the carbon neutrality vision for 2050. We will vigorously push ahead with carbon neutrality across all aspects of the economy and society while fostering a low carbon industrial ecosystem. Korea will host the second P4G summit in May, through which we seek to exert our utmost effort to spearhead international cooperation in overcoming the climate crisis. On the note, I ask for your keen interest and participation, respected global leaders. In the face of countless uncertainties and risks, there were those who never faltered but rose to the challenge. The history of humanity advanced as a result. Even now, as we're living through the pandemic, humanity is overcoming hunger, disease, and war, and practicing the shared values of freedom and democracy, humanitarianism, and multilateralism, taking one step forward at a time. Now, to move towards a new, more inclusive society rather than towards a K-shaped recovery, the world must further reinforce solidarity and collaboration. Korea supports the WHO's efforts to ensure equitable access to vaccines and is taking an active part in the COVAX facility. I expect that international cooperation will strengthen in distributing vaccines to developing countries, and our cooperation with the International Vaccine Institute will expand further. Furthermore, I hope that the actions agreed by G20 last year to support world trade and investment in response to COVID-19, as well as essential cross-border movement of people, will be facilitated smoothly. Through multilateral cooperation, I hope that a more sustainable and inclusive recovery will be achieved together. The Republic of Korea remains deeply committed to surmounting this crisis together with the entire world and is ready to actively join the international community's call for solidarity and cooperation. As a country with an exemplary track record in epidemic control and prevention, Korea seeks to share its experiences in COVID-19 response with the rest of the world and broaden humanitarian assistance to countries with vulnerable healthcare systems. Solidarity and cooperation, not each of us fighting our battles alone, is what makes us stronger in defeating the pandemic. Let us embrace this idea and work to bring it to reality. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. To explain to us and to show how uh, Korea has really mastered those different challenges which we have on the global agenda. Now we will go into a discussion and we will uh, uh, divide the discussion in four different parts. First, we will look at the general environment and the challenges um, in the future for Korea. Second, we will look particularly at um, COVID and um, the vaccines. Then we will look at the digital New Deal and we will fin finalize with uh, the uh, New Green Deal. So there are four parts and for each of the parts I will call on some of um, our participants to make a very short introductory remark and then the president will respond. Um, so please, please um, um, stick to one minute 
But first I want to formally conclude uh, this session and thank again uh, the President and thank the President also that he is ready uh, to interact, uh, uh, interact with us to deepen some of the issues which uh, he brought up in his speech.